There we go. So today I want to talk about uh, the future of news sharing and discovery um, and how it's changing and how I believe and how we believe at DIG things will evolve over the next couple of years. But aside from just talking about new features, because a lot of people, uh, a lot of talks I've seen, it's always about adding on additional features um, to your app. I really want to talk about, you know, what we've done on our site wrong and what issues we really need to address. Uh, I think it's important to take a look back at what's working and what isn't and refine your product going forward. So I believe there's a lot of really unanswered questions uh, in the social news space and this applies to um, all of us. Um, the first one is really how can we create an experience that you will enjoy? And when you look at Dig Today, it's really a reflection of the zeitgeist of the users of that time. So you might come to the home page and see a front page that's completely filled with political-based news stories. And you look in the top ten and you say, well, none of this really applies to me. Or if there's an Apple event that day, you'll see, you know, 15, 20 Apple-related stories um, or celebrity gossip-related news. And while this is great at reflecting kind of what's going on at any given time, it's really not a custom experience to you. And, and we have a few little tools that allow you to customize that by removing categories, but we have to do better. Um, and I'll get into that in, in, in just a little bit. Um, the next thing is, how can we enhance your experience based on your participation? So why dig? I mean, why click a button and make the number go up by one? Why does that matter? Um, what are we providing back to you and how is it really enhancing and enriching your life? And the answer is it's really not doing that today. Um, you know, we have 30 million people that come to DIG every month to consume our content, but we only have a little over 3 million registered users that are like the editors of the site. And why isn't it 28 million registered users out of the 30 million coming to the site? Why aren't there more people digging? Why aren't there more people using Reddit or voting up on uh, Yahoo Buzz? I mean, these are all, I don't believe we're really offering a compelling experience back to that user to spend the five minutes to sign up. Um, so we'll talk about that. The next thing, how can we further empower you to spread the information you care about to the people that want it? And this is really interesting in that we don't, do a really good job servicing the long tail of content. So if you're really into, say, like Ryan is, like fedora hats, he's got a weird fetish for that kind of thing, um, you know it's true, uh, why, what would, why should he come to the site and submit that story about you know, the history of hats when it's just going to fall flat and no one will view it? And what tools can we do to make sure that that story, no matter how small, is spread to people that care about it? Uh, I think that's very important for us to figure out. And then the last thing is, how can we improve the conversation? Um, how can we bring like-minded individuals together to foster a positive conversation? Uh, and make sure that when someone comes in just to slam someone or is a troll, that they can't participate until they've proven themselves, or we can build some type of reputation system around those individuals. So these are all things that we've sat back and said, okay, you know, it's great, we're growing, you know, month over month traffic looks great, we have a lot of people coming to the site, but these are real problems that we all need to start talking about and start addressing in order to continue uh, evolving social news and making it uh, actually something that everyone will, will take part in. So I believe a lot of these problems can be solved when we adjust our filters of information. And if we take a look at, um, one I don't have listed on here is like the direct sources that you go to, but when it comes down to like the social side of the house, you get recommendations uh, and discover new content from like kind of two primary sources, and that those are people that you know and then the unfiltered masses. People that you know uh, is oftentimes very highly targeted and very relevant to you. Uh, it comes in the form of emails, I am, uh, you know, chat, IRC, uh, your true friends on Dig that you've added. Um, or, you know, conversation around the, wa the, the water cooler. Um, and that's very relevant to you. And then there's the unfiltered masses in which you receive content on things like Delicious Popular, uh, the zeitgeist of DIG. And we know this can oftentimes produce really interesting results and, and, and content that, you know, you will find really kind of gems that you wouldn't normally find on your own, but it's very unpredictable and that you might come to the site and find something that really doesn't interest you. So really we see that there is a space in the middle that we're missing. 
and these are the people that you're agreeing with all the time, but you just don't know it. And, you know, if, if you visit a, an article and you read an article and you say, okay, this was quality content, you're agreeing with a lot of other people, but you don't have a way to, to voice that. And, and now with DIG and, and bookmarking and other ways, you can say, okay, I enjoy this, I want to place a vote on it. But really, who are all these other people that you're constantly agreeing with? And so we call those these like similar users. And we can use this to create um, a recommendation engine. And what we do is we look at who these users are and what else are they finding that you might also find interesting. So our recommendation engine basically is calculated in real time where it takes a look at all of your digging history, going back in, into uh, your profile, uh, all the way back, and then compares it to everyone else. And we had to write this really crazy uh, custom graph database to do it, and, and we dumped PHP and went with Python, and uh, Joe Stump, who's also giving a track here, is one of our architects on the site. You might want to talk to him and find him. He's at the conference if you're curious about that. Um, but we wanted to see what would happen if we did this, and is it true that these like-minded individuals are discovering things that, that you might find interesting? So we applied this, and um, I'll give you an example here of sports. And if you take a look at kind of the, the background image, it's actually a map of our, our users and their friend connections. But um, so what we do is we compute these connections between users in different topic buckets, and then draw strength connections between the users. So example in sports, if you're digging and constantly agreeing with, let's say, Green Bay Packers fans, I'm a fan of uh, that team, then you're drawn closer to these users and clustered with these users in the dig recommendation engine. And then as you're bearing stuff, your, say, Dallas Cowboy stories, you're kind of distancing yourself from these users uh, that aren't similar to you. So this happens in real time and in every single bucket, topic bucket, uh, that we have today. So. The results, uh, we applied this to our upcoming sections uh, in July, which is our, our content that hasn't made the homepage yet, so it's just the up and coming stories. And we've seen an increase in friend ad adding activity by 4x and increase in digs by more than 40%. So right now, even though it's our first stab at this, we can say, yes, it is working. And we know this by not only what we've been doing, but in talking with partners. Uh, I mean, you see it working on Last FM, you see it working on Netflix. Um, these types of systems uh, do drive more traffic and, and, and give you the information you want. So, what are the next steps and, and what do we need to do going forward? Well, we need to open up our taxonomy so that it's not just confined to this fixed number of, of buckets in which you can submit content. And that has to do a little bit with us classifying the data as it comes in and as it's submitted to the site and then starting to pool together these users in all these different clusters so we can get extremely niche. So if you're submitting stories about biotech or about tea or about rock climbing or wine, you name it, we can start grouping these users together. And this is really interesting because it allows us to do things like dynamic grouping. And if you think about the way in which you participated in groups and large social networks in the past, it was about going and saying, okay, I want to belong to this group, I want to join this group, there's a message board associated with it, and I have to actively go in there and contribute. And it was kind of, uh, you had to have a serious commitment to do that. And now when we start doing this behind the scenes, it's not about having to go and check in on your group and see what you're doing. It's about going to a site, reading an article uh, about Oolong Tea, seeing that, that dig button or whatever other button it might be, voting on it, and then saying, okay, I know by pressing this button and voting, I'm instantly sharing this with other like-minded people, and it's going to be clustered together with those people. Um, so you can get really niche in that way. And so once we open up that taxonomy and create these hundreds of thousands, if not millions of little clusters, we can then start to create a better customized page for the individual. And this isn't to say that the uh, zeitgeist view isn't important, because we, we truly believe the front page of DIG will always kind of be that random, crazy, we, we, we don't want to get rid of that. It's a lot of fun to look at, but we need to get a little bit more custom and deliver content to the people that care about it. And that will be us creating something that is a combination um, of recommendations in both popular and upcoming uh, friends activity and all these little groups that you're participating in or these, these kind of behind the scenes clusters that you're participating in. 